Welcome back to another rebuild here on NBA 2K23 Next Gen. In today's video, we are once again back with some historic rebuilds. And today, we are going to rewrite NBA history and see if the Charlotte Hornets didn't make the biggest mistake in the history of their franchise by trading away Kobe Bryant. So we all know Kobe was taken 13th overall by the Charlotte Hornets. He never actually ended up playing a game for Charlotte because he was traded over there to the Los Angeles Lakers for Vlade Divac. And looking back on this, obviously one of the more lopsided trades in NBA history. Not saying Vlade Divac is necessarily a bad player. And I know the Hornets had some success with them relatively, but nothing compared to Kobe being Bryant over there in LA, obviously teaming up with Shaquille O'Neal and going on to be one of the greatest duos in NBA history, both of them being one of the greatest players in NBA history. So it's crazy to think about. We're going to put this into some perspective. We're obviously not going to make that trade for Vlade Divac. I know why they made the trade. I've read the articles. I know they had the rebounding problems. They traded Alonzo Mourning. I fully understand it. We're going to figure that out as we go, but what we're not going to do is trade one of the best shooting guards in NBA history. And finally, before we do get into the video, let me know any other historic rebuilds or rebuilds in general you guys do want to see down below. Obviously, there's been a ton of suggestions for these, but I know you guys change your mind sometimes, so let me know what's new. What's on the top of your head right now that you want to see in a historic rebuild? This Kobe one was requested a ton. That's why we're here doing it today, man. It's going to be a three-year rebuild. Let's see if we can get the Hornets and Kobe a championship together. Let's get into it. All right, so we're here post-draft in the 1996 offseason. As you can see, the draft has been completed. What I actually went in and did was make sure that every team made the correct draft pick with who they actually drafted. And we've got it basically 100% accurate. If you want to take a look, feel free to pause at any point. Also, I switched these two. I know they were traded for each other, but I was just, I'm just basically eliminating a step of trading Ray Allen for Stephon Marbury while making the draft choices with the teams they ended up with for their rookie years. Uh, you got Antoine Walker here, Lorenzen Wright, Kerry Kittle, Samaki Walker, Eric Dampier, Todd Fuller, Vitaly Potapenko. I can't pronounce that. And obviously... Kobe is here. He's 17 years old and an 83 overall. I know a big part of the story is that NBA teams were a little hesitant to draft guys right out of high school. The year prior to this was the Kevin Garnett pick by the Minnesota Timberwolves, and he ended up having a decent rookie season, but I believe the Timberwolves as a team really struggled, which definitely gives some reluctancy. And also, if I read it correctly in the article, I'm sure a lot of you guys know a lot of the history more than I do, so correct me if I'm wrong. But Kobe's agent wanted him to play on a big market team, which means he didn't grant access to some of the smaller market teams, which means they didn't have a ton of information on him. Hence, another kind of flame in the fire to why Kobe Bryant ended up getting traded to the Lakers, obviously, big market team. So, rookie signings. I know how stupid the contracts look. I don't know if that's a glitch. If it is, I'm going to fix it because it's ridiculous. I'm not paying Kobe $50 million, $52 million in his rookie year in 1996. I'm just not doing it. Uh, they also took Tony Delk with the 16th overall selection. And so... We are going to make sure we don't try this, man. He ended up having a pretty good career. RIP to one of the GOATs. All right, so team player options, we have nothing there. Qualifying offers, we also have none. I do want to check and just make sure. Is his contract? Okay, it is. I'm going to edit these contracts. I don't know if it's the draft class or if it's something weird with the rookies. The salary cap appeared to be fine when I checked it out earlier. But this is a shared scenario. So some things might be a little bit off. I'm going to edit Kobe's contract and Delk's because there's no way I'm paying a 71 overall that much money either. It's currently not letting me edit Kobe's contract, which is weird. Typically, there's a way to do it. Like, there's an option here in the drop-down menu that says contract. Just not here. I don't know if I have to wait until the regular season. But obviously, this is a shit ton of money to play to one player, especially in 1996 when the salary cap is a little bit different. So, that's his contract right now. And don't get me wrong, if we were in today's day and age... Obviously, that's not a terrible contract for Kobe Bryant, one of the greatest players of all time. But him and Tony Delk making a shit ton of money definitely is going to limit the moves I can make. So that makes me a little bit nervous. In terms of the free agents, this is clearly not a great free agent class. You got Rasheed Wallace, Tracy Murray, Terry Cummings in here. I mean, what the fuck? Is it just not going to let me? What is going on here today? I have absolutely no idea if this is just a glitch or if this is just a year one issue, but this is obviously not good. Um, okay, so we're definitely going to make a couple trades. I do want to find a center. Obviously, we don't have Vlade Divac anymore. And uh, yeah, let's get into that. I think it would be really cool if we were able to add Dikembe Mutombo to this team. He would obviously fix our rebounding issue and he'd be a huge upgrade at the center position nonetheless. We're offering up Muggsy Bogues and Michael Adams. Obviously, Muggsy Bogues is an awesome player and I would have loved to have had him on the team. I'm good with Kenny Anderson, who's only 25 years old. He's an 84 overall, taking over the starting point guard spot. And then also, I'll play Tony Delk. 
I know we just drafted him 16th overall, and he is a still only a 71 overall, and he's making a shit ton of money, which I'm praying to God I can fix next season. But I don't really think it's going to be the end of the world to move a backup point guard in order to find a starting center. And obviously the shooting guard spot, Kobe will be starting. And I'm fine with Zell Curry coming off the bench. Good good three-point shooter. His son's pretty good too. All right, let's go ahead and see if we can end up getting Dikembe on this team. I don't know what it would take. I mean, if you want to just take a bunch of players for me that won't play, that's honestly fine. I don't know if they're going to really value these guys a ton. Um, you want somebody else. I don't know. You want Raphael Addison. And then how about, I don't know, a first round pick in the year 2000. That's weird. Um, just to see. And then how about another first? And I agree to that. All right. So we add Dikembe Mutombo to this team. Seven foot two, 30 years old. Obviously an upgrade at center. I don't know why I can't sign free agents right now. I like genuinely have no idea why. Like why it's just not letting me. I don't know if there's some setting that's messed up. I'll check. But honestly, we're kind of fine for now anyways. So I'll probably see you guys at the start of year one. All right, we're not at the start of year one. I know what the problem was. There was It was off. Like the contract signing was off. Whoever made this shared file, obviously not the brightest bulb in the world. But we're going to go ahead and we're going to try to find ourselves a backup power forward most likely at this point. God, that was just annoying to figure out. Um, I also doubt it's still going to let me edit Kobe's contract right now. But we'll try to do it at the start of next season. Um, I don't really think Darren Hancock, Hancock, yeah, Hancock is the answer to back up Larry Johnson here. Obviously, Larry Johnson is an incredible player. He's an 88 overall, 27 years old. I'd like to go ahead and find him a backup that's a little bit of a higher overall. I mean, Alec Kessler, I'm not going to pretend I know who that is. Randy, Wiley, these are not people that I know. I guess Alec Kessler is the highest overall. I'll give him a minimum contract. Actually, is he going to take a two-year deal? I don't know. It's worth it. I mean, it's weird because things are a little bit different because he's definitely not taking that because here it's there's a lot of lower overalls than there are currently in the NBA, which makes obviously a little bit more sense because I don't think there's ever really been more talent in the league than there honestly is right now. I kind of stand by that statement, but we'll see. I mean, a 74 overall for a backup is fine. It's definitely fine. Uh, I'm going to move Raphael Addison and Darren Hancock. I don't know if I can get anything for either of them, but... Honestly, I don't really need them. So even if it's just second round picks, I'll probably end up taking them. Uh, back 73 overall. It's not terrible. Um, Washington Bullets. I love that. It's so cool to see some of the older kind of team names and logos and designs. And obviously, we can probably see a court at some point in time. It's just cool to see. Um, in terms of who we're going to be trading Darren Hancock for, I mean, there's not really a bunch of picks here. It is what it is. I can just keep him on the team. All right, I'll see you guys at the start of your one. I just want to show you guys quick. I was able to edit the contracts of both Kobe and Tony Delk. I just gave Tony Delk a relatively small contract. It's not that big of a deal. Uh, and then this Kobe deal is actually somewhat accurate. He signed like a three. I actually, I pulled it up on my phone just to see if I could find exactly what it was. Uh, hang with me for a second. I should have had this up. Uh, in 1996, Kobe signed a three-year rookie deal with Los Angeles Lakers, a deal that earned him close to $3.5 million. So, obviously, we're going to try to put this basically as close to accurate as possible. The final two years are team options. The first three years, technically, I know it was only a three-year deal. It's only a three-year rebuild anyway, so it doesn't matter. But relatively accurate to what we ended up actually giving him. So, I'm glad I'm not paying him $56 million when the salary cap is nowhere near that high. But let's go ahead and set the rotation. All right, so the rotation is set, and we are finally here at the start of year one in Charlotte. This team's honestly looking pretty good, and I'm really excited to see what ends up happening. I think we can definitely be up there with the top teams, especially in the Eastern Conference right now. And maybe we can win a championship. Who knows? Uh, it's going to be Kenny Anderson. Obviously, we have Kobe starting at the two. Dude, I can't get over those old Charlotte uniforms. Like, just seeing Kobe, that just looks... It looks so good. It's so pure. I just, I love it. Uh, we have Glenn Rice starting at the three, Larry Johnson at the four, and then obviously we made the huge trade for Dikembe Mutombo. He is going to be my starting center. He's also a free agent this offseason. It's definitely something we got to keep our eye on. But yeah, Dikembe is 30 at this point in time, but we're not necessarily terribly worried about that. The bench is something we're going to look to improve. We have Del Curry coming off the bench. Obviously, that's great. Scott Burrell, Alec Kessler, Tony Delk, and George Zydek. George Zydek. Awesome. Um, it's not the worst bench in the world. By no means is it the greatest. I know we didn't end up trading Darren Hancock, but it is what it is. I think this team is very, very good. And I think we can honestly be a top three seed in the East. I'll see you guys at the end of year one. So the first regular season has officially come to an end. We finished with a record of 51 and 31. It's honestly not terrible. It's definitely something we can build upon. And we obviously have the talent to do so. Michael Jeffrey Jordan out here winning MVPs. He's 34 years old. 
Good God. <laughs> uh, AI wins rookie of the year. Oh my God, those Sixers jerseys are clean as fuck. Why do I feel like I've never seen those before? Those are insane. Obviously, AI went number one overall the 76ers. And uh, yeah, man, he is just incredible. Uh, James Worthy wins six man of the year. David Robinson, defensive player of the year. Rasheed Wallace, most improved. Doug Collins wins coach of the year. All right, so we're in the playoffs. You can see we're the five seed over there in the Eastern Conference. Let's take a full look at the standings right now. Pistons, Bulls, Magic, Hawks, Hornets. Also, is Shaq still in Orlando? I'm assuming he probably is. Yes, he is. That makes sense. It's a pretty good Orlando Magic team. Dude, I wish this team could have won a championship. It would have been so cool. To, not that I would have seen it. I wasn't born yet, but Penny and Shaq winning one together. Um, okay, here's a look at the numbers on the season. Larry Johnson, Kobe Bryant, not a bad rookie campaign whatsoever. 17 and a half points, two and a half boards, four assists. It was nearly 60% from the field. I mean, that's just incredible. Uh, Glenn Rice, Kenny Anderson, Del Curry, Dikembe Mutombo. It's not bad right now. It's it's really not. Uh, rebounds was Dikembe and assists was Kenny Anderson. So, Atlanta here in the first round. Mookie uh, Blaylock? Mookie Blaylock, I don't know if I've heard him. Stacey Ogman, Ken Norman, Grant Long, Christian Leitner. You got Steve Smith off the bench. Isaiah Thomas off the bench. How old is he? He's 35 at this point. Okay, well, that's a very deep and very talented team where we definitely have our hands full in round one. And, oh my God, I forgot the first round back then was best of five. Wow, okay, so we... <laughs> I wasn't putting together that was an elimination game. Holy shit. Okay, I'll remember that in the future now. Um, and the Dallas Mavericks, Jason Kidd. Out here, 24 years old, winning finals MVP. They beat Penny and Shaq in seven games. Congratulations. All right, so I don't typically show, like, player retirement, staff retirements, but since this is a throwback, we could have some pretty league-changing, history-altering, potentially, moves that happen. Let's go over it. Uh, Larry Nance retires. Dominique Wilkins retires at age 38. Ends his career with the Celtics. Dale Ellis, Rolando Blackman, Sleepy Floyd, all-time name. Jay Humphreys, Thurl Bailey. <laughs> This is cool. This is cool. Uh, staff retirements. Albert, I'm just going to see if there's anybody here that I recognize. Yeah, not off the top of my head. I don't recognize any of these names. I'm sure they're, maybe some of them are real people. I don't know. Uh, Hall of Fame, Dominique Wilkins. No surprise there. Jersey retirements. Wilkins and Blackman get their jerseys retired by their respective franchises. Historic changes is cool. So, I don't think we were quite to that point yet. I think it's like a little bit to the early mid maybe somewhat late 2000s when some of the teams just made some of the worst logo uniform court changes in NBA history um, team branding completely rebrand the Washington Bullets the Washington Wizards changing the name logo uniforms and floor I'll let it happen uh, it's just it's cool to see some of these things though over here for us in Charlotte we have obviously nothing uh, okay draft lottery time this is the Tim Duncan draft class I don't think we're gonna have a lottery pick I don't think we'll end up with Tim Duncan. The Toronto Raptors will, however. The Spurs fall to two, and I say fall to two, but it's just such a big, not swing and a miss, I guess. But, I mean, if we take a look at this draft class, Tim Duncan, you got Tracy McGrady, Chauncey Billups, Keith Van Horn, T. Antonio McDaniels. Yeah, I mean, it's Tim Duncan. So, I mean, I'm assuming San Antonio is going to take Tracy McGrady. That feels like the correct pick. Uh, in terms of our draft picks, let's head up to the draft. I don't know if we have... Anything like crazy significant? We have 22 and then we have 24 in round two. Okay. I wouldn't be wondering, is there is there a world out there where I try to trade for number one and take Tim Duncan? I, I, I understand that Larry Johnson is a very good player at this point in time, but it's Tim Duncan. It's, it is Tim Duncan. I might try to pull off craziness and have Tim and Kobe play together. Let's see if we can make that trade happen. Who knows? We weren't able to make a trade. Unfortunately, both teams with the number one and number two overall picks just really didn't have any cap space. And honestly, I was a little hesitant to give up Larry Johnson anyways. I know he's obviously a great player, but Tim Duncan is Tim Duncan. But they didn't have the cap space and can't make it happen. Uh, so we're going to be sending our two draft picks this year to Golden State for a top three protected pick next year. I mean, looking at this team, it's probably not going to be extremely valuable, but you never know. We'll find out. But we're going to make that trade with Golden State, which means we're not going to draft anybody this year. Uh, so heading up to team player options, we have nothing. I know Dikembe is a free agent, which is obviously a huge priority for me. I have to make sure I get him back. Uh, we do have bird rights on him. Do we have any other major free agents? Oh, yes, we do. Holy shit. Okay. Um, well, we definitely need to go out and find a way to re-sign Glenn Rice and obviously get Dikembe back as well because that's super, super important at this point. And obviously we have, uh, where the hell is he? Kenny Anderson is a free agent as well. So hopefully we have enough money to re-sign all these guys. I'm a little nervous that we might not. 
but I'm certainly going to try. I'm going to wait on Dikembe if possible to see if any offers he does not. So I'm able to re-sign Anderson and Glenn Rice, which is very big. Geiger can go. Honestly, I'll let Scott Burrell go as well. I do not want to renounce Dikembe. Shit. Do I have to renounce Del Curry, does that mean? See, I don't want to risk losing my rights on Dikembe and see we're over the cap space anyways. I'll renounce Del Curry. I just have to make sure I get the big three back because obviously these guys are extremely important to the success of this team potentially, so I cannot let them go. So we'll wait on Dikembe one more day. Do not renounce him. We're agreeing to contracts with Anderson and Rice. And let me now resign Dikembe Mutombo. And hopefully he comes back and uh, Dikembe. Thank God. Okay, cool. So this bench is definitely going to be a little bit tricky heading into next season. Uh, it's something we're definitely going to have to focus on at some point in time. Obviously, we're going to end up losing uh, Del Curry, which is going to pretty much hurt us a lot, but kind of is what it is at this point. Um, okay, so we have a backup point guard as 72 overall Tony Delk. I don't know, maybe a little bit of potential. Um, I'm not as worried about the backup shooting guard. I think Kobe will progress to the point that he probably won't even need a backup. So backup small forward, backup power forward is definitely something I'm looking for right now. Gerald Glass, so I don't really know much about him. Danny Ferry is here. Yeah, all right, I'll sign Gerald Glass on a one-year minimum contract. I mean, getting a 75 overall for a basic minimum is not terrible. Oh, he's going to let me... Hang on a minute. He's going to let me re Okay, well, I didn't think we were getting Del Curry back, but we do. So that's our new backup shooting, or not new, but he's returning as the backup shooting guard to Kobe Bryant. And then, yeah, man, we basically get everybody back that we really needed. And then I can still sign like a Danny Ferry. Why the hell not at this point? Out of Duke. Okay, terrible hairline, but other than that, he's a decent player. Okay, this is it for now. Um, maybe have a trade. If not, I'll see you guys at the start of year two. So we're currently at the start of year number two right now, and I just want to show you guys we are signing Larry Johnson to a contract extension. This is the final year of his deal, and just so I don't have to worry about in free agency, Larry Johnson is coming back on a four-year deal. Just wanted to show you guys that. Let's set the rotation. All right, so the rotation is finalized. Kobe Bryant is up to an 89 overall, and you honestly love to see it. This team is looking pretty good. You can see a little bit of regression with guys like Glenn Rice and Del Curry and maybe even Anderson a bit. I don't know if he was an 86, but nonetheless, this is, is still a tremendous team, and I think we definitely should be in the mix of teams that are championship contenders. So it's Kenny Anderson, Kobe Bean Bryant, Glenn Rice, Larry Johnson, and Dikembe Mutombo. The bench unit is Del Curry, Danny Ferry, Gerald Glass, Tony Delk, and Greg, or Greg George Zydek. So it's not the greatest bench in the world, but honestly... It's not terrible. It could be a lot worse. All right. I'll see you guys in the end of year two. My dumb ass accidentally hit start and it skipped past the award. So here I am showing you guys. You have Jason Kidd winning an MVP with the Washington Wizards. Rookie of the year went to Rob Payton. Interesting. Uh, six man of the year, Brad Doherty, David Robinson, won another defensive player of the year. Most improved, Steve Nash. Here's a look at the All-NBA teams if you really want to. And then, yeah, it doesn't really matter. Coach of the year is George Carl. My apologies. I went by way too fast. Nonetheless, we are the one seed here, which is obviously great. Let's take a full look at the standings right now. We're 68 and 14. The Wizards have Jason Kidd, who I believe won a finals MVP last year. Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, Chris Webber's here. Patrick Ewing. Holy shit. They are going to be a pain in my ass. And 71 and 11. What? How did Charles Barkley end up here? Oh, good God, you have 490 overall. Oh, my God, I hope we don't have to see them. I hope somebody pulls off an upset. There's no way we're beating that team. Uh, here's a look at the numbers on the season. Feel free to pause. I mean, everything looks relatively spread out, and that is just because we have a deep amount of talent, not as much as Seattle, but good God, man. All right, we have Orlando here in the first round. They still have Penny and Shaq. They have Kevin Johnson, Dennis Scott, Joe Courtney. I don't really know who that is, but I'm remembering now. This is a best of five, so it's first to three wins, and we're up 2-0, and we sweep. Okay, moving on to the five-seed Miami Heat. Tim Hardaway, one of the more underrated players in Miami Heat history. You got Hershey, Hershey, excuse me, Hershey, not Hershey. Hershey Hawkins, Cedric Sabalos, Sabalos, I don't know. Rasheed Wallace is here. Alonzo Mourning is here as well, our old friend. This is going to be an interesting series. They definitely have a lot of talent. We are up 3-0, though, and we do sweep them. Okay, beautiful. We went over this Wizards team. It's very, very good. It's not as good as Seattle, but it is still a very talented team nonetheless. And we're down 2-0. We're down 3-0. Wow. Not the way I wanted this to uh, kind of go. Okay, we're battling back, and we end up losing in 7. I'm assuming the Sonics are going to win. There's, I don't think anybody was stopping that team right there, which is just absolutely insane. But, uh, yeah, player retirements. Magic Johnson calls it a career at age 38. 
to 77 overall. Stayed with the Lakers the entire way. Uh, Derek Harper, Doc Rivers ends up retiring. Terry Cummings, Sam Perkins, Byron Scott, Spud Webb. It's pretty cool to see some of these guys. Uh, staff retirement, Doyle, Lucas, Bob Hill. I, yeah, I'm, I don't know. Um, in terms of... Okay, cool. Also, I don't know if it's, if there's another setting that's fucked up that I can't change my coach. I'm sure there is. Let me go find it. I don't know if I just can't find it or not, but yeah, I, I kind of realized like at the start of last season, I was like, I didn't really have an opportunity to look who my coach was and really see if I wanted to change or not. And I still don't see it, which kind of sucks, but it is what it is. Uh, Magic obviously ends up in the Hall of Fame. No surprise there. And they also retire as a number in Los Angeles. Again, no surprise. Uh, historic changes. Nothing that affects us. Implement a mid-level exception to the salary cap. That definitely could help us this year. Uh, or I don't know if it starts next season or whatever. Uh, draft lottery time. Not going to be us in the draft lottery, but um, is what it is. I don't really know who we would probably add to this team anyways. I mean, the starting five is really good. Also, who is this draft class again? This 19... Yeah, Vince Carter, Dirk. Paul Pierce, one of my favorite players of all time. Um, so let's just head up to the draft. In terms of our pick, I don't think it's going to be valuable. I know we also have the Warriors pick. That actually is at number 14. I mean, maybe is there a trade we can make? I mean, honestly, I don't know. I know, obviously, Vince Carter and Dirk and Pierce. Like, these are all incredible players, and I'm sure they would honestly help us. I just don't know how much they'd help us in year one, like in our final season. So I would say unless I find a really perfect trade, I probably won't make one, but let me, let me just see. All right, so hang with me for a second. The Vancouver Grizzlies have the number one overall selection. I'm going to offer to Kemba Matumbo, and it's not because he's playing bad or it's not... There's no reason for it. I just think we switch things up a little bit. We get a guy in Dirk Nowitzki who could definitely be a transcendent player for us. And honestly, at a minimum, I think Dirk will put up similar numbers. Hell, he's probably a better shooter. The defense isn't quite as good, but he's a good shooter. Um, I'll offer up the 14th overall pick as well, and then the two other picks I have this year. Obviously, this is not an easy trade for them to just accept, and we don't obviously have a ton of assets either. Um, do I have any other players down here that are... No, I don't. All right, which means, is this going to go through? Yeah, they do. All right, so Dirk is officially going to be a Charlotte Hornet. I'm going to take him over Vince Carter. I'm going to take him over Paul Pierce. He's clearly my number one in this draft class. And I'm going to move him to the center spot. And yeah, man, we're going to start a 79 overall Dirk over to Kemba Mutombo. I don't know how well it's going to work out, but sometimes the rookies in these games end up working out incredibly well for weird reasons. And Dirk and Kobe on the same team would just be actually insane. So uh, he's a 79 overall center. Nothing really changes there. And I'm very happy to have him here. Um, I don't know if we could make any other major changes. And I say that just because of one, we're not going to have any cap space. And two, we don't really have the assets to make any major trades. So that does make me a little bit nervous. But I think we might... We don't have money. I know we don't have money. I don't know if we don't have any other free agents. Yeah, no, I locked everybody up on long-term deals, so it would have to be a trade. I just don't know what that trade would be. We're going to make this trade with the New Jersey Nets. I know it looks like a lot on paper, and honestly, it is. We're going to send them Glenn Rice and Del Curry for Kendall Gill and a future first-round pick. Kendall Gill is playing absolutely out of his mind, so we want him to come back to Charlotte, and honestly... I don't necessarily have a problem with Glenn Rice. I don't think he's the issue to why we're not winning, but I think if we get a guy like Kendall Gill, he is a year younger. It's not really any different, but we're going to move him to the small forward spot. He's going to be starting. Also, losing Del Curry will hurt a little bit, but he's also going to end up regressing even harder because he is 34 going on 35. So I know that for a fact. We will try to replace him, but if we take a look at this team... I'm fine with Kobe not having a backup. We're not going to have a backup shooting guard. I'm good with Anderson and Delk. We'll get a backup small forward. And we'll find ourselves a backup power forward and a backup small forward as well. So, Blue Edwards, Kevin Gamble. Okay, so we have some options here. I'm going to sign Blue Edwards, mostly because he has an awesome name and he's a somewhat high overall. Um, I'm going to probably let everybody else go. If I can re-sign Danny Ferry after all this, I might do it. But I don't know if the game's going to let me. But we get Blue Edwards in here. And power forward spot, Don McLean. I mean, these are just not great options. Could I sign maybe Rex Chapman and trade him with that first round pick we have? See if we can get a little bit of an upgrade at the backup. Wait, did I not sign him? Okay, I don't know why I didn't automatically sign him. I love this game. Okay, let's go ahead and now trade Rex Chapman, the one first round pick, and a future second. Are there any backup power forwards that are even somewhat, I don't know, upgrades, I guess? Yeah, Kevin Edwards in here. It could be a good backup point guard option. You know what? I actually might do that. Was that? Is it Nick Claxton? 
What is this game? I don't even understand it half the time. Um, you know what? We're going to continue to make upgrades. We're going to make this trade here for Kevin Edwards. We're also getting another first round pick. Kevin Edwards will be my new backup point guard. Another trade with the Nets. And then Tony Delk and another first. I don't know. We're, we're just going to see if we can maybe find a backup power forward instead. I don't know if we're going to find anybody incredible here. And it definitely makes me a little bit nervous. Fred Hoiberg is here. Former Bulls head coach. A, uh, I'm not seeing anything that I absolutely love, which does make me a little bit nervous. I'm not going to go with an eight-man rotation, that's for sure. Um, so actually, I'll sign Don here, and then I'll include Don in the trade as well. I'm getting a little cheesy right now, but I know most of you don't really care. It's not like this is supposed to be a realistic rebuild or anything. So Don, and then that first-round pick. Is there a power forward here? Tyrone Hill is 30. He's only 6'9". I think I can, I can make that... Oh, I thought, I thought that dude's name was Poop Richardson at first. Okay, I need to stop being a child. Um, I'm probably going to make that trade unless I find something better and I don't. So Tyrone Hill. We also get LeBradford Smith, another just awesome name. I mean, a lot of great names today. Um, and then we're going to go ahead. We're going to move Tyrone Hill to the backup power forward. His body goes down and overall, it's not the end of the world. Okay, we've reshaped this team a little bit. Kobe's not going to have a backup. I'm not going to play LeBradford Smith behind him. But uh, yeah, man, I'm feeling pretty good right now. I'll see you guys at the start of the third and final year. We've gone ahead and made some changes. We're trimming it down to a nine-man rotation. We added Dirk Nowitzki to this team. And honestly, I'm really liking the way things are looking. It's Kenny Anderson. Kobe's up to a 94 overall. As I mentioned, he will not have a backup. He's playing all the th 37 minutes for the shooting guard spot. I like it. Uh, Kendall Gill, new addition in here as well. Larry Johnson, obviously, still here. And then Dirk's going to be our starting center. you got German Jesus here. Uh, the bench also got better, I'd say. you got Blue Edwards here, Tyrone Hill, Kevin Edwards, and George Zydek. This is a good team. I think it's championship caliber. I'll see you guys at the end of the third and final season. We go 71-11 and 11 in our final season. That is obviously great, but this team still has to win a championship. So I'm really hoping we can do that. Uh, Kevin Garnett is your MVP over there in Minnesota. Antoine Jameson, Rookie of the Year. Didn't go to Dirk, but Antoine Jamison, nonetheless, solid rookie campaign. Bryant Reeves, sixth man of the year. Ben Wallace, defensive player of the year, is in Golden State. Tracy McGrady, most improved. And Kevin, I, this is our coach, Kevin Lowry. Laffrey, I don't fucking know. Cool. Thanks, Kevin. All right, so we obviously are a one seed with 71 wins. We are only seven games up on the Wizards, who, this is another awesome name. I can't even pronounce that. But, yeah, their Wizards are obviously very good. Over here in the West, looks like Seattle's come back down to earth a little bit, but they still have it. a fucking just insane team, dude. That's mind-blowing. Um, all right, here's the numbers. Kobe averages 28. Basically a breakout year for him. I don't really know how he wasn't most improved player, but... I wait, is that not an award right now? I don't think that's an award right now. That makes much more sense. But yeah, this team's impressive nonetheless. Honestly, Dirk definitely gave us a little more scoring than we got from Dikembe. Obviously a few less rebounds, but he can also space the floor, which I don't think is necessarily the worst thing in the world. And Dikembe's obviously not great at that. All right, we have a best of five here with Cleveland. Terrell Brandon, Bobby Phils, Lionel Simmons, Sharif Abdul, Rahim, and Vitaly Potpenko. I probably butchered like three out of the four of those names minimum. Uh, we're up 2-0 right now, and we're 2-1. Don't do this. Don't do this. Uh, continue. Do not do this to me. I, I cannot lose in round one and not, not make a far playoff run. All right. Cool. We should be. Okay, we're good. We're, we are good. That scared the living shit out of me. Thank the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, okay, now we are facing, yeah, Michael Jordan, Scottie Pippen, Brad Doherty here, Jawan Howard, Sam, oh my God. You got Tony off the bench. Steve Kerr's still there. Oh, shit. This definitely scares me. We are up 3-0, though. We sweep them. Okay, that makes sense, right? All right, Wizards here in the Western, Western Eastern Conference Finals. Jason Kidd's here, Antonio McDaniels, Tracy Murray Weber. Patrick Ewing got Rodney Rogers coming off the bench. Another very, very good team. This is going to be a challenging championship if we're going to win it. We're up 3-1 right now, and we're in the NBA Finals. And we're taking on MVP Kevin Garnett, Steve Nash, and the rest of the Minnesota Timberwolves. Is that Robert Ori off the bench? Oh, good God. All right. Um, I think we're the better team. I really do. And I want to get some gameplay. I really do is that. I want to do that as well. Kobe and the Hornets. I mean, that is just awesome. And what a fun way this would be to kind of cap off the video. I think it really would be. So... I actually might have to try to not blow a lead in here. Actually, no, we're good. All right, I'll see you guys in there. Okay, we are here in Minnesota. Look at the throwback scoreboard. You got everything going on right now. Kobe at the free throw line. He's got 40 on the night. I mean, good God, man. I mean, he just looks... Everybody honestly does, but Kobe specifically just looks clean AF in this Hornets jersey. 
I can't even lie. It is obviously awesome getting to play with him in this game, especially in a Hornet shirt. It's just cool to see, man. It really is. So, yeah, man, we're going to be winning our first championship. Good way for this video to end. I don't know why Kenny Anderson's on Kevin, Dur Kevin Durant, Kevin Garnett. Obviously, that's not <laughs> ideal, if you will, but I like it, man. This, this was a fun way to kind of cap off this video. And uh, obviously, we would have liked to get more than one championship, but end of the day, we still got one. Kevin Garnett's doing a tremendous job here on Kenny Anderson. Give me a pick. Thank you. That's an inside. Thank you very much, Larry Johnson. And uh, yeah, man, we're up 30 here in a closeout game. We're about to sweep the Timberwolves out of their own building. So yeah, man, I guess at this point in time, let me know your thoughts on a lot of different things. Your thoughts on the craziest what if almost, maybe a one of, maybe not the craziest, but one of the craziest, Dirk just got fucking bullied. One of the craziest what ifs in NBA history, man. I mean, it's just crazy how, what? What was the violation? I don't know. It's just crazy how a trade like this can change NBA history and like I'm obviously on draft night you know and when they made the trade the Charlotte Hornets did not know how much this is going to impact it's just crazy to think of how such maybe an inconsequential move to them ends up being one of the most consequential moves in NBA history so crazy to see let me know your thoughts on all this down below along with any other historic you know kind of what if rebuilds and we can just do normal historic rebuilds as well maybe some of the better teams that never won a championship I'd definitely be down to do it. And when I say historic, it doesn't even have to be in like the 90s or 80s or anything before that. I mean, honestly, I'd be down to do some rebuilds with teams that should have won one anyways. Like maybe those, what was they, the 67 win Rockets just like five years back, something like that. Not that they should have won them because they were dealing with the Warriors, but you know what I'm saying? Like just get those teams a championship. I think it'd be cool. But we're going to do one more possession here before we do end up closing it out. I am going to assume that Kobe here is going to win finals MVP. It's really not a crazy prediction by any means but yeah man imagine if Kobe played his career in Charlotte what what a different landscape the NBA could even be today at this point just weird to think how one trade man can change the NBA forever it, it honestly it is really really cool but all right final defensive possession we'll do one more offensive obviously I want to get Kobe involved here so we're going to go ahead oh my god are those the oh, shoes are sick too okay I don't even know Do you want to just give me a pick Fuck it. I don't even care. Oh my god. What a way to end it. I'll see you guys at the finals MVP. We end up sweeping the Minnesota Timberwolves out of their own building and Kobe Bryant is your finals MVP. Oh, it's just, it's beautiful. Take a good look. It is beautiful. All right, so we end the video with one championship. I know there was some potential controversial moves. I mean, obviously we went ahead and made the trade for Kendall Gill. We went ahead and traded for Dirk Nowitzki after we went ahead and traded away um, Dominic. Said Dominique Wilkins, uh, but we made some controversial moves, and ultimately we ended up with a really good team. And obviously, twenty-year-old Kobe Bryant is now a Finals MVP. Awesome to see. So, as I mentioned before, let me know your video ideas for any rebuilds, historic rebuilds, any rebuild challenge, whatever you guys have. Let me know down below in the comment section. You always do. I know you guys wanted this one bad, and I'm happy I was able to deliver, and I think we built a pretty fun team, and I had a ton of fun with this one. So, as always, if you guys are new around here, have not yet subscribed to the channel, we'd love to have you here in the community, so hit that sub button, stick around, and uh, yeah, man, other than that, as always, thanks so much for watching. I love you guys. I'll catch you guys all in the next one.